Let's try to not screw this one up this time. everybody, it's Jim from Sprague Wood Turning. Uh, this week we revisit a project, a failed project of mine, which I mixed the resin incorrectly. Uh, it's been kind of bothering me, so I figured that it would be good to get this off my chest and, and actually have a successful um, casting and a beautiful finished product. So this is actually the walnut from the first failed casting that I did. I held on to these pieces because I just knew in the back of my mind that one day I'd be <laughs> doing this again because um, I have a tendency to kind of dwell on things like this when they don't go well. So um, I figured that I'd have to revisit this to get some closure, if you will. So I'm just trimming the pieces to height right now on the bandsaw. Um, probably should have been using two push sticks there instead of just the one. Um, but, you know, I had probably a good solid inch and a half on the other side of the blade. So it was a little sketchy. And if you're curious why I didn't do it when it was all in one piece, it's because I was really worried about it falling apart. So that's why I did it after I broke the pieces apart. Again, using the brass brush here to clean things up. Does a pretty good job, actually, as long as you hold on to the pieces correctly. Whoa, there it goes. And if you're going to use this method, I do recommend wearing gloves. Uh, if your hands get close to the uh, brushes, you can lose a little bit of skin. Uh, it's usually not too bad. I'm not a fan of puzzles, and that's what this was. After I broke it all up, I was trying to determine what, what was going to be the best way to set this in the little casting bucket that I've got. Eventually, I come up with something I think will work. So I trimmed those pieces on the bandsaw and then brought them back. I'm just gluing them in place, um, trying to maintain spacing. I want um, I want the resin to be showcased here as well, as long with, along with this in green walnut as well. This is the new formula deep cast from Designer Epoxy. And again, I will give you a little spoil. There was absolutely no filling that needed to be done in this project. And of course, the lemon glitter. Um, I was bound to determine to make it work this time. So <laughs> that's exactly um, why I decided to go with the lemon glitter again. And for this piece, I mixed the pigments quite strong like I usually do as well. All right, so this is a liter and a half. See where we're at after that. Yeah, that looks like it's gonna take at least that again. I'll be back. All right, here's another liter and a half. This uh, new deep cast from Designer Epoxy is really thin. Uh, I'm really loving it. It should flow well, seal up all of these holes and voids and cracks. We should have quite a casting when we get done here. So there you go, three liters. I know that that's going to drop off easily a half inch. Uh, that walnut's pretty punky, but um, should look pretty fantastic. All right, see you guys in three days. All right, it's been three days. Uh, as you can see, the resin has dropped off quite a bit. That's I was anticipating that. That's why these are maybe a little thicker than they ordinarily would be. Um, this might be tough to get out. We'll have to see. Remember, I glued all these pieces on the bottom. And there's no mold release in this.
So those of you who enjoy watching me <laughs> struggle getting these castings out, you won't be disappointed here. Um, the reason why I didn't use the mold release is because I needed those spots to be glued down so they didn't move. Um, ideally, I would have used mold release, but I just didn't see that as an option. And, you know, I'm I'm trying just about everything to get this thing out, uh, in, <laughs> including uh, driving that little leg bolt down in there and trying to lift up on it. Uh, it just wasn't working for me. Air pressure wasn't working, you name it. Um, eventually, I got a punch. Again, trying to be careful that I'm not going to damage the casting in any way, because, of course, that's an issue. Um, so anyway, <laughs> the, the struggle is real and eventually I do get it. Um, and it's quite surprising what was holding it. The casting was loose inside the bucket and you'll be surprised to see what was holding it. Believe it or not, the only thing that was that was putting up that big of a fight was this piece of duct tape that's down here in the base. Uh, I will not use that anymore. Uh, shocked by that. I can't get over how much of a fight that thing put up. So what I'll do is I'll fill this hole with uh, the white caulking that I put around the outside. I see I've put a crack in it here so it needs to be repaired but like I said it, it perfectly fits in my large pressure pot so that's why I like it. A little bit of tape embedded there, but I don't think that was the issue at all. I think it was just that piece of duct tape. It's just keeping that from springing out. All right, well, we got a center here. I'll, I'll double check that to make sure it is. And um, I'll try and get one on this side. We'll get this on the lathe and have a look at it. Here I'm just using the Cutsaw sanding disc to grind down that walnut that's sticking above the surface of the casting. That way we've got a nice flat spot for the uh, drive center to sit. 475. I should mention that I'm using the Hercules from Hunter Tool Systems to uh, do this casting. You'll see me use the gouge as well. Uh, but the bulk of the resin material is definitely done with the Hercules. And, you know, the other part of this this whole thing is that this is an end grain turning, a true end grain turning. So um, that's not easy to cut under normal circumstances let alone having um, resin in it. So uh, again, the Hercules is my number one tool when it comes to doing uh, the resin with the Osprey a close second. There might be some comments as to why this casting is as thick as it is. Um, keeping in mind that, you know, uh, I'm setting myself up for success here. Uh, I want to put a definite a profile on this platter. So you need some thickness in order to achieve that. Um, you don't know exactly how things are going to go when they're in the pressure pot is the other factor here. Um, that resin could have dropped off easily um, another half inch. Just depends on how punky the wood is. Uh, there you're going to see one of the issues that I've found with the new deep cast. And, it, and it's not even so much the new deep cast. It's pretty much all resins. If you use um, hot milk glue to hold pieces in place, uh, of course, that is sealed off from the resin. The resin can't get at it. So around it, because this casting is all in grain, it really absorbed a lot of resin. Um, but of course, it couldn't penetrate where the glue was. And that's, you know, the, the resin's doing its job. I'm just showing here that I've sharpened this gouge. So, you know, I, I don't know how many passes I took there. And then, of course, we had to resharpen. So, you know, this is one of the knocks on high-speed steel over carbide. Uh, but the majority of that top of that casting was wood. So I figured that the gouge, in order to speed the process along, was the right choice.
as you can see with the gouge this is real time clip again and you can see the speed at which i'm going with it i uh, really can't push it any harder than this and i think i've got maybe one or two passes on this and so you know it's once you get down to the resin and the wood where it's combined together, uh, you are definitely going to really, really slow down as far as what the lar how large of a cut you can take. And, you know, I'm, I'm maybe taking a sixteenth of an inch there. Maybe, uh, maybe not even that, really. But anyway, that gives you an idea as to the speed at which you would turn if you're using a gouge, too. And, and keep in mind that this thing is pretty much freshly... Um, First to sharpen as well. So there's our first real look at the top surface of this this platter, and you know I'm pleased. That's kind of what I was going for. So happy days, no uncured resin, all that good stuff. All right, so I'm holding the casting with my coal jaw set up. And I'm just roughing up the very bottom, the base of the bowl, or sorry, the platter. And here's the glue block being put on. All right, so we are mounted outboard. Uh, these spots are an issue for me. And of course, that's where the glue was. So it didn't penetrate. Uh, the resin didn't penetrate where the glue was. So we got lots of thickness here. I'm going to take try and cut this down, say, another quarter of an inch or so. And hopefully we'll get rid of this or it will blend in better than it does because I do not like that. Sorry about the shaky camera footage. I didn't realize that the camera itself was one of the legs from the tripod was up against the lathe. And um, so that's why it was shaky. So I cut quite a bit of footage out of there so that that wouldn't bother you. Um, so again, I'm working on the bottom profile here. Uh, this is another real-time clip to give you an idea of the speed. Uh, as you can see, it it's just dust coming off of this. And again, that's because of 10 grain. So end grain and resin is certainly not going to produce any shavings. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, so, you know, I kept going at this and thinning it out and thinning it out. And if I had it kept going, um, I probably would have diminished the appearance of those um, those spots on the, on the very back side of the platter. Uh, the problem was I still hadn't done any profiling on the face of this so you know by the time i got that done there really wasn't a whole lot i could have certainly made this piece uh thinner than it than it was but you know i i really don't like taking resin pieces that are combined with wood down any thinner than quarter of an inch um you just need you need some thickness for the wood to hold that resin um and it's the same thing for CA glue and any of the inlays. Any inlays that I typically do with using CA glue will never be thinner than a quarter of an inch because you need enough surface um, material there for the binding agent to bind to it. And the resin is no different.
It's basically one nibble at a time, <laughs> working at working at profiling the rim. Um, every time I shut the lathe off, you can see that how the surface has improved. I'll call those shear cuts. They're probably not true shear cuts, but um, with the gouge tilted up like that, or sorry, with the uh, Hercules tilted up like that, it will certainly give you a shear cut. Uh, this is a different view. Uh, I've backed the camera away a bit here. And as you can see, you know, we're starting to get a little thinner on this piece. Um, typically going from the center out to the rim, but not necessarily always that way. Uh, and again, if you if you're used to using a gouge when it comes to using a tool like this uh, the principles are kind of the same you really can treat this pretty much like a gouge uh, the higher you tilt the handle in the back the less likelihood that you're going to have any any tear out or get any catches so that's something to consider uh, but i will typically use this above center below center uh, and right on center and so there's one I do find that these cuts are maybe a little more aggressive than the pull cut towards you. But I'm just checking for flatness here. Right now I'm I'm figuring okay by the time I get this done and do a little bit more profiling on the back and sanding, you know, I'll be close to quarter inch, three eighths of an inch. So that's kind of what, what I'm shooting for right now. And those push cuts are certainly more uh, more aggressive than the pull cut. That's for sure. So there's something to consider when you're when you're looking at hogging out material. Um, there is a fair bit of kickback from the tool, so you got to make sure you've got a pretty good grip on it. And here I'm just getting down to the final little bit. I actually turned the cutter on the Hercules because I wanted a nice clean cut. So use my index finger as a stop to get that perfectly flat surface. All right, so I've got some Pro Series mixed up here, and I just want to, I'm going to cover the whole piece with this. Um, I don't know if we're going to do a resin finish or not, but I'm really hoping that it weeps into these areas where that glue was, uh, just to kind of make things look more even than what they are right now. So that's the plan. We'll see if it works should work and I'm not even really all that concerned about if it's laying out flat or anything because I plan on giving this just a quick trimming tomorrow and um, if we want to do a resin finish then we'll do that then but I figured that right now this is probably the best best way to correct this This may have been more effective if I had just painted on those little areas and let that resin um, soak in. Even um, if it was the deep cast where of course it takes three days to dry, it probably would have done a good job penetrating in there. But you know, I just didn't have the time. So that's why I used the Pro Series. All right, well anyway, that's what it's gonna look like. <laughs> There's a sneak peek anyway. Uh, anyway, this will go in my clean room where there is heat, and tomorrow we will finish this off. Well, all right, it's the next day. Uh, lots of bubbles here. That's all right. I was anticipating this. doesn't matter because we're going to trim this back anyway. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, we've blended in those areas where there was resin staining and no resin staining. I thought this would actually run a lot more than it did. Hardly ran at all. Anyway, once we get this on, get it trimmed up and sand it, we'll figure out if we're going to do a resin finish or if we're going to do a normal finish.
So yeah, like I said, just one last little trimming here. And again, that's why it was left a little thicker yesterday. And um, you can see the light coming through it. So it's quite impressive. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I decided to do this again. Um, and there you can see, like, I mean, it's, it's quite vibrant with the light coming through it. There you can see the handle of the Hercules tilted way up in the air. Um, definitely not a place you want to get a catch on that outer rim. Uh, again, you won't see any push cuts here. They're all pull cuts or uh, you'll see kind of a variation of it here in a second. I was having a lot of vibration out at the end. So I took my index finger and was kind of rubbing it just lightly on the outside back side of the platter and there you can see like i'm happy with that that is cut nice and clean there's no tear out and it's you know it's it's pretty much ready for sanding so here's that pull cut and then you'll see i'll just kind of reverse it but in that configuration you're not going to it's not going to get um it's not going to be a very aggressive cut So on this piece, just like usual, sand it from 60 to 800. Uh, I'll show you what you can do with clogged sandpaper. Uh, that one's clogged up pretty good. So that's a, a belt cleaner. And uh, again, you can get those at sandpaper.ca as well. And it does a good job taking away any of that resin. I find it's typically a problem with the lower grits and the high grits. They tend to load up a fair bit and that's just you know that's the resin really clogging things up so anyway that's one way of making your sandpaper go a little bit longer and because i couldn't get the drill in there i used my little right hand right angled air powered sander to get in there to do the backside. of course triple e buffing compound is what i use before the finish and don't forget the denatured alcohol to clean the surface because we don't want any of that on there prior to any finish going on. All right, so we're all done sanding. Uh, those spots are still on the back side of this. Um, I know that I can make them go away with a resin coat, but I'm in the process of making a rotisserie right now and it's not ready. So I'm gonna go with the Water Lux this time, original VOC medium sheen. And we haven't really, I don't even know if we've done it on walnut. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I want to see if it'll help blend in those spots in the back. And um, yeah, let's see what we get. Well, what do you think of that? Finally, um, some success <laughs> with this lemon glitter and walnut now on the back side turn this around so you can see it there you can kind of see the spots still um i'm wondering if the solution may be if you just kind of really saturate it with the finish if it would darken it up i'll have to see i mean it's not overly bad you can't even really see on this side at all where it was it's just those two spots anyway we'll look at it tomorrow and we'll make a decision from there see that pearl in there is awesome glitter all right see you tomorrow all right it is the next day i thought i'd show this before we did anything else uh, as you can see, the uh, the waterlux is really covered nicely. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of resin penetration here too, so that's certainly helping. Um, I think we're just going to have to live with these. Um, even I think if I had done a resin coat, I don't think that it would have mattered. I think that the only way you're going to get that to fully penetrate would be to saturate it in resin and put it in the pressure pot to get rid of these. They're not real obtrusive. I do wish that they were a little less obvious, but um, that's kind of where we're at. Anyway, if I had to guess, I'd say it's only going to take two coats again. Let's find out.
So like I usually do, again, using the Triple E Buffing Compound between coats, it's less aggressive than steel wool, and it gives a pretty darn nice finish. Again, don't forget that denatured alcohol. All right, second coat of Waterlux coming right up. All right, well, there you go. I mean, that, again, uh, really impressed with the coverage that you get from the Waterlux. I, if you're looking at this from a production standpoint, if you're doing shiny finishes like this, shiny, durable, long-lasting finishes like this, if you can cut your coats from three coats to two coats, uh, that will definitely increase your production. So, you know, the expense of the Waterlux compared to a lot of other finishes uh, will definitely pay for itself over time. And there's our two spots. Regardless, I think that this, uh, with a light behind it, backlit, sitting in a plate stand, would look awesome. See you when we're doing the foot. Just using my 3 16 inch parting tool to part this piece off. Uh, you'll see me kind of, uh, I think I got it. Uh, nope. Got to take a little bit more off it. Ah, never mind. I'll just use the saw. Here I'm using the gouge to get rid of all that hot melt glue. Uh, because the Hercules has a smaller cutter on it, it will clog the cutter quite quickly when you're cutting back glue like that. So uh, I prefer to use the gouge. You know, and again, um, switching back to the Hercules, uh, you'll see me go a lot further to the right to make quite a large foot. That might have been throwing some people off during the video, but I wanted a large foot so that if it is going to be used for function when it sits on the table, it's not going to be rocking. So um, the foot is actually probably half the size of the overall um, diameter, I, I believe, somewhere around there. And uh, it is slightly concave as well. Thanks to those who've stuck around to watch the whole video. I really appreciate it. Just doing some final sanding. And again, you know, the bottom of this was sanded from 60 to 800 as well. And uh, two coats of finish on the bottom. All right, well, let's have a last little look and talk about this. Uh, the piece ended up being almost 13 and a half inches uh, crossed, a, an inch tall, and about three-eighths of an inch in thickness. There's the profile. I know that I didn't really show that very often, but that's the profile that I went with. And, you know, that's why you need that's why you need that thickness in order to get a profile like this and to have a, an elevated foot. Again, I'm trying to show that somehow. But an elevated foot as well and as you can see it's nice and wide that way when it's sitting on the table it's not going to rock um <clears throat> i'll try and put up some photos at the end uh where it's backlit and it's pretty impressive actually um this is how it should have gone <laughs> the first time but you know that's what happens when you don't mix resin properly so this time i did didn't have any issues and now I'm super conscious when I'm mixing resin that I mix it properly and so so should you uh, what else fun project the staining or lack of resin staining on the back I don't think that it really takes away from the piece at all to be quite honest with you uh, this thing is either going to be sitting on a table or it's going to be sitting on the, or on the wall or it's going to be sitting in a in a plate stand uh, I think it would look really nice in a plate stand with a light shining behind it that's kind of how I would display it and this piece is for sale if you're curious 
uh, just send me an email to spragwoodturning at gmail.com and we can work out the details. I'm not going to disclose the price here because it may be a gift. Um, we are coming up on 45,000 subscribers. <laughs> so uh, again, it's been really, really busy. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Uh, we're probably not going to do that bowl this week. The, the next video, probably the video after that. Somewhere is in there. Fun project. It's something that's been kind of bothering me because I didn't do it right the first time and I needed to correct that in my brain and here it is. So absolutely fantastic. And again, that, that new thin deep cast formula from Designer Epoxy didn't have to do any filling at all, nothing. Uh, it's a little hard to see, but on the very bottom is the details. Uh, but of course, um, black on black walnut typically doesn't show all that well, but it's there. Trust me, it's there. Um, okay, well, that's it. Uh, let me know what you think about this week's video. And of course, we're going to pick from the comments for the 45,000 subscriber give, giveaway video. So please leave a comment down below. And I will try to show some pictures at the end with this backlit. So it should look pretty, really nice. All right, well, that's it. Uh, take care, stay safe. Don't forget that thumbs up. Don't forget that bell. And please share with your friends. See you next week.